And we are actually most of the way through January of 2023 now. And uh, maybe for some of you, that's super refreshing. Um, I know there are some of us that, um, Blake, I know you love goals and the start of the new year. Um, and there are others that maybe the turn of the year is, is added to your task list. Maybe it's stacked up new directives or new projects, uh, things on your desk or things on your life that just seem to weigh you down. Um, and it's, it's easy to let our stressors really pile up um, and we slowly or rapidly descend into what's called burnout. And I really just want to talk about that today. Let's, let's unpack a little bit more. So Blake, can you, can you jump into a little bit? What is burnout? Let's start there. Make it simple. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, I think it's funny because just nobody else knows this, nor would know this, but this is the second time we are recording this one. That's right. Because the entire first podcast we did that was great, I feel like it hit well, all of the files were corrupted. Yep. It sucked. And <laughs> it was so easy to go to these dark places. And I don't mean dark because, oh, you know, a podcast didn't record correctly or something of that nature. But just how you let your brain go to places. And it, it just, we... It is so much more important that we have control uh, of of our thoughts than letting our thoughts go rampant because they can lead to a place of burden. Now, before we get into all of this today, I do want to have some disclaimers here. First disclaimer is um, Pete and I are not psychologists, counselors. No. We're not any of that. We love that stuff. We right. have that stuff in our lives. Yep. So this is not talking about burnout from a place of overwhelming anxiety and chemical imbalances. We're not talking about any of that. So when you hear that today and you're like, you just don't understand, you're right. We don't understand all of that, right? And we're not speaking from a place of, of that place. We, what we are speaking from is this place of burnout that's being, that, that's happening because we're allowing these overwhelming feelings of stress into our lives due to a couple other things, right? So I, I just want to have that disclaimer out there because I, I've been on both sides of this and not heavily on both, but I have been on both. And about 15 months ago, uh, I was in a place that was pretty dark and my, I was allowing burnout and exhaustion and anxiety to just have its way from way with me. And there are elements of burnout that are controllable. There are elements of burnout that are not controllable. Okay. So I think we just want to kind of look into this today because I don't, I know that being in that place of burnout and being a leader and feeling like you've got to give and give and, and you've got to have all these results and you've got to bring, you know, you got to win and all these things just can get so piled up on your back, especially when you're not winning, that it just overwhelms you. And so I think it's important for us to just understand that burnout is just this really heightened level of fear um, or this heightened level of stress that that really is being pushed, I think, by uh, probably about three areas. OK, um, now. I think what's important is that burnout is really our inability to cope is what burnout is, right? Burnout is that place where all of a sudden the stress is at a certain level and our ability to cope is not able to work. Like it's not able to equate, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where, you know, a fear comes into our life. Something happens, our stress goes up and our ability to cope with that stress is not there. Um, and, that's it's when you're so taxed, right? Burnout is when you are so taxed that you you can't give anymore. And that's I think where we've got to spend a little bit of time here is how do we how do we deal with this? How do we understand this in a way that you know, knowledge is power? How can we have knowledge over this a little more? Um because that complete and total psychological exhaustion it, it can't stay there forever. Our bodies were not meant to have that level of stress in them long term, right? It was meant, and, and stress is not bad. Stress is neutral. Uh, in fact, I would say stress is good. 
You know, if you're walking down the road and all of a sudden a wild beast comes out of the forest, you know, a bear all of a sudden comes out. I want stress in my life because stress yeah. does a lot of good stuff for us. Um, but after that bear has gone and I've survived, I don't want to stay in a place of stress forever. That's not how our bodies were meant to work. So right. this is where we've got to get to a point where we can understand how to be in and out of stress in a healthier way. So really you're talking about as, as this, um, it's the stress that overcomes, right? So burnout is when stress overcomes um, and essentially in that case wins. And that's when we get to that complete and total psychological and physical exhaustion and mental right. state that we just can't, we can't deal with anything at that point. So this, the stress is good. The overcoming stress is where we have a problem. Uh, right. And I like, I like that you said, you know, the, the complete and total, right. Exhaustion on those places. It's, it's, this complete taxing, um, on you because you're not balanced, um, in your systems and things like that. And because you're lacking, and this is a, this was a new phrase for me, um, but lacking personal agency. And I'd like you to talk about that a little bit, Blake, if you could just go into that a little bit, if you could. Yeah. So I was in a meeting recently, uh, and the meeting was all on burnout, which was pretty interesting. I mean, the whole meeting wasn't on burnout, but this guy came in to talk about burnout in a different light. And what he what he said that was so interesting and it helped me was to be able to compartmentalize. And I'm a person who, as I'm trying to understand things, I like to separate things so I can have a little bit more understanding of each of those components to overcome. Well, what he was saying was <clears throat> that personal agency. So first off, personal agency is just the sense that I'm the one who is causing or in control of my actions. Okay. I'm the one who's causing or in control of my actions. Really important here. That doesn't mean results. Okay. Doesn't mean you are in control of everything that happens or all the world's results. That's not true. Personal agency is just the sense that I'm the one who's able to um, be in control of whatever action I'm doing. Okay. And Personal agency is really built between these uh, areas, these three different areas, and these are the areas that became really helpful to me. So personal agency um, really matters with the results you're getting. Okay, so results in our life matter. We put in, we hope to get out, right? It just makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. So as you put in, if you're putting in and you're putting in and you're putting in and there's no... Uh, results coming back, that can lead to a place of burnout because you're spinning your wheels and not getting the results you want. Now, this is not just in work. This is in family life. This is in spiritual life. This is in mental health, physical health. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. There, this is everywhere. And it, it can lead, that one area of results can lead to a place of burnout, if not balanced correctly, right? Um, the next area is support. So that's your support system, that system in which people are in your life. So that system in which um, mentorship, whether it's, you know, actual human people or maybe books and things like that, that is building into you. If you don't have that support system or those people you can just go be you with, that's going to add to a lack of personal agency where you don't feel like you're in control of your actions because you don't have that support to relieve some of the pressure, right? And then the last one is self-care. I'm really, really bad at this one. And self-care um, is, is just the ability to take care of you, right? It is the conscious effort to make sure you're staying healthy. And I don't just mean physically. I mean physically. I mean mentally. I mean the way we eat, uh, the way we get workouts in. But I also mean like the way you shut your brain off. It's important. And so... All three of those areas, the results, support, and self-care, like, remember, burnout is just that inability to cope in those areas. And we want to be able to cope. And so this is where it was so helpful for me to say, you know what, like, in this moment, I all of a sudden stress is high and I'm looking at my ability to cope. How am I going to deal with this? And I don't, I feel like over and over and over, it's not working. That's when I can go, hold on, let me, let me just 
run through this check. My results. What's going on in my life? Is it a results issue? Because I need to be able to get some kind of results. And we'll talk about yeah. like how to deal with that here in a minute. But uh, no, it's not results. What about support? Have I just not been around people in a long time? Have I just been so introverted or so self-focused that I haven't seen? I've got nobody else around me right now. Yeah. And or I've, you know, basically became a recluse by accident. You know, those are or on purpose. Um, yeah. You know, those are those areas you want to look at. No, it's not that. Maybe it's self-care. Um, and so we want to be able to do something and think through these things when we hit this place of burnout. Because when we hit burnout, we lose energy. We have a loss of motivation. We have a loss of care. And your thinking starts to be not your thinking. Okay? Mm -hmm. It starts to become others thinking. And not just specifically others, but I mean, you are going on autopilot. You are going on just survive. And that's not always the best place to be. Absolutely. I, I think it's interesting you brought up to um, that this, that, that burnout affects areas, different areas of our lives. I think there's a, a common th uh, train of thought out there that burnout is referring only to work, right? To our vocation. And I think that um, it's easy for us to just kind of compartmentalize that to the point where we get burned out because we're not looking at other areas of our lives. Maybe in our personal lives, we've got something going on that's this huge event or traumatic something going on, and we don't realize that that's affecting other things. We can't compartmentalize everything. All of these pieces, every, every part of our lives is going to work together or not work together in a lot of cases and going to push us more towards that place of burnout. And burnout, I, I believe, is a, a whole person burnout. It's not just a, oh, I'm burned out at work, but at home, I'm a great mm -hmm. person and I'm happy and I'm, I'm able to connect and I, and all these things like you can't do one and not have, and, and not the other. It's all connected. Yeah. It's all piece of it, piece of it. Yeah. Um, so as you're talking about personal agency and really just that having that feeling of control, how do we get back to that place? What are things that we can do to get back to the point where we have that personal agency back? Yeah, so consistency, consistency, consistency. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying this like, oh, I'm in a place where I'm stroking my never going to happen beard here <laughs> and thinking that I have all the wisdom in the world. That's not true. But what I mean is that when I set up regiments in my life, when I set up habits in my life that support the results, the support, the self-care, mm -hmm. when I do that, I become very powerful. Okay. And so there are those natural regiments and things that we have. And today, like, we're, I don't want to be like just talking about the real base level things yeah. of how we can deal with this. Like, it's important to have those normal habits to stay healthy. But I want to talk about creative ways to overcome burnout because I yeah. think sometimes we got to get way more creative when dealing with this kind of stuff because our, our listening ears are not great in burnout. They're like, so hearing this, like, Hey, all you got to do is just like be happier. That's, <laughs> that's not helpful. Right. So let's, not at all. let's dig a little deeper. Let's get a little more creative on ways we overcome burnout. Yeah. So one of the ways I, I enjoy avoiding burnout as well as starting to get that grip back, right? You feel like you've lost grip. You feel like you're falling. You feel like you're just clawing at the dirt as you're trying to crawl this cliff. That's just unclimbable, right? So one of the ways that I like doing this is I like getting in my car and I will put my windows down and I will open my sunroof and I will blast music. And it doesn't have to be anything specific. I don't have like this one specific song. It really depends on on what I'm feeling for the day. Sometimes it's, you know, heavy rock. Sometimes it's, hey, I need to cry a little bit right now and that's okay um, and get that out. And then I'm going to go ahead and blast the rock and just dance and sing like nobody's watching because I hope no one's watching when I'm dancing and singing. So <laughs> that's one of my favorites is, is that, that car drive that gets you away from your current environment, changes your perspective, um, and gets your mind into that, that subconscious, um, revitalization there. You're not, you're not doing anything actively. You're letting your subconscious work on things and, and be free at that point. Yeah. I love the car ride mentality like it is a place that i you're right you space out it 
which sounds horrible, but like, because you're driving a vehicle that's thousands of pounds. And it, yes. anyway, uh, you got it. You're okay. Um, but I do like, we'll go on rides just as a family, um, which sounds super like leave it to beaver here in the fifties mentality where let's get in the car and go for a ride. We do. And it's just relaxing and boring. And my kids are not always happy to do it. They're like, this is boring. And we're like, good. <laughs> yes. Being bored yes. is good for you. Right. Yeah. And, um, but just having that is, is so important. I think also another creative thing, um, and I've talked maybe about this before, but it's just having a quarterly recharge day, right? Like I don't, I I do this now and I'm setting up those habits to do it more often, but uh, to literally just go somewhere for the day and just have a, a stop, a, a slow down. Um, I heard a quote recently that is really becoming just the mantra for me. <laughs> and that is when I get busy, I get dumb. And I love that. Like when I get busy, I get dumb. Ergo, I need to just have an intentional not being busy day. I need to have an intentional just sitting with my thoughts. I need to have an intentional day with of self-care where like on this quarterly day, yeah. and this again sounds bougie or whatever, I don't really care um, because I'm at a point in life that I don't care anymore. Give two shits what people think if I'm like, you know what? I went and got a massage. Or I went and got a pedicure. Like, I don't care because, my goodness, I need that. I need that release. And uh, I, it's a day that I get to spend time with goals. And not in a busy way where it's not my right. thinking. It's other people's thinking. Uh, and I've just got to go, go, go. No, no, no. This is a day where I get to spend time with my goals. I get to spend time spiritually sitting in a presence as, as I want to sit there, as I need to be there. Uh, I get a, I, on that day, I'll go and just eat a meal that I love. Like, what is my go-to meal? Which a lot of times is Indian food. I was just going to say. I love getting Indian food and just, yeah, I mean, it. I love getting it. It loves getting me. It's great, it you know, but, um, but just having those things and thinking creatively about it. Like, I highly want to encourage anybody who's like, I, I just need to, find, figure out creative ways to, um, you know, overcome burnout. I need to figure out ways to get over this really quickly. I just want to say, uh, if you're in a busy mentality and you're in a dumb mentality of trying to figure this out, you're not going to get there. I no. promise you're not going to no. figure out a creative way until you go to a place where you stop and have thinking time. Like, isn't that weird to say something like, Hey, like, you should just sit down and have thinking time. We don't say that to one another because we don't do that. And it sounds right. like you're a psychotic maniac. And like, who just sits down and have thinking time? I do. I love it. I have been creating this practice of it where I just sit down. I like throughout the day, I'll have a thought like, oh, I need to think about that. And I write it down on a piece of paper. I put it right over there. If you're on the video podcast by that chair on that table and the next day, like I've got a stack of them right now. And the next day, early in the morning, I get up and I just sit with that thought for 20 to 30 minutes. And I come out with some of the create most creative, amazing, like the thoughts had to be in the air. And I was reaching and grabbing them because I don't yeah. think that way. And it's because I don't stop and enjoy the self-care of allowing myself to be. So, yeah, those are those are some creative ways, I think, on self-care for me. Yeah, I think it's important too. I, I love the idea. Um, and I think it's important to say that anything that we talk about here too, it's not going to work for everybody. And maybe it's not going to work in the, um, really in the timing that we put out. Like Blake, you figured out quarterly for your recharge day. Some people might need it monthly. Some people might need it once a year or twice a year. It really just depends on your situation, your level of stress, your level of, of uh, production and things like that. Figure out what works just because it may not work at the first time. Give it another option or another chance, maybe later on down the road or change the interval on it. Yeah. And, and that's a great point. I mean, I, that self-care day, that quarterly is, is great because it's all focused there, but you also can have self-care by having a weekly schedule. And I talk about this. I am 
such a huge proponent of this, and that is having a weekly stop day. A, I call it a Sabbath. I mean, I didn't come up with Sabbath. That's been around for thousands of years. Mm-hmm. Okay, but, and it, it's just a time for me to relax, for our whole family to rac- relax. If it's enjoyable, if it's worshipful, that's what we do. If it's not, we don't do it. And that sounds like why that's a weird thing to do. There's so much to do in life. Sure there is, but I would rather do whatever I do with a full tank than do a whole lot with an empty tank. And so that day is a day that helps me tremendously. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And that's when you don't have that, you notice it, you feel that the rest of the week until you get to that point again, where you you're there again and you go, okay, I need to rest and breathe. Um, Another another creative way that I like to um, to deal with burnout, either overcoming it or avoiding it. Um, it's always best, I feel like, if you can do these things to avoid the burnout, because once you're down that that slippery slope, getting back up is a lot more difficult than avoiding sliding down. Right. Mm. Um, but one thing I like to do, I love to listen to fantasy books. Um, mm. I am in the middle. I say middle. I think I'm actually like smack dab in the middle of a Brandon Sanderson novel. And if you guys have read any of his, you know, they are epic, epic novels and they're wonderful. They're great. Um, but I love I love getting in my car and when I'm driving between meetings or if I'm, I've got to go somewhere to the office or something like that. I love putting on a fantasy novel because it allows my my brain to go kind of to that, to that same thing where we, you know, listen to music and things like that. But it goes to a creative place um, and I kind of go into autopilot. I know where I'm driving. Yes. My eyes are on the road. Yes. All those I'm being safe, obviously, but my brain, my, my brain is in a different world and it allows my, um, my here and now brain to take a break, to rest a little bit, um, and to, to have some time to breathe and refresh and relax. Um, and I get so immersed in that world. It's like, I'm actually there. Um, and I don't think, I think your brain doesn't actually know the difference at times. Um, and it, it, you trick yourself into thinking that you immerse into that, into that world as it were. Yeah. And you're a hundred percent right. Your brain doesn't know the difference between imaginative and actual a lot of times. Mm-hmm. And that's why you wake up in the middle of a dream sweating profusely because yes. all of a sudden, you know, a monster was about to attack you and you wake up and you're in the comfort of your own bed. Yeah. But your body doesn't know that. And, yeah. um, and that's, it's a very neat thing. That's also, even though we're not talking about results yet, I feel like listening to fantasy books is also helpful, not just for self-care, but for results. And I know that sounds Mm -hmm. stupid, but if you think about the fact that when you said, you know, you feel like you're there, books are written in such a way that we're supposed to superimpose ourselves as the main character. We think Mm -hmm. of our brain work as being the main character a lot of times. So the results they get, feel like the results we get. And so it can be really helpful to read books and listen to stuff and be engaged in story because it helps you go through that hero's journey. Sorry, it's just a thing I thought. No, about. you're good. I, I I love the 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 side note on that too because um I don't know if you've ever I'm sure you've done this, but I find myself reacting in similar ways when I'm hearing you know the character reacting to the book. I can feel my face doing reactions and my body reacting to it as if I was mm, that person. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, another thing you can do too, um, work on a home project, right? Renovations, repairs, things like that. Those are, um, a lot of times those are cathartic. They're a a different, um, pace or a different speed than your normal day to day gets you out of those. Unless, you know, you happen to work in the construction industry and that's all you do. Maybe that's not the best choice. Maybe find something else that's a little different. Um, the other thing too, that I like to do is I choose to have a lot of my meetings in person rather than virtual. Um, and that's for several reasons. I, I, there's a lot of, of, um, science behind this and I don't understand all of it, but there's, there's a a particle that leaves us and goes to another person when you're walk talking to them face to face where they can feel that energy. Um, and you don't get that when you're interacting with them over perhaps a zoom call or a phone call that's not there. Um, and then also it, it changes your environment. Right. So you're no longer in the same four walls that you see every single day. I don't have the mint green all around me every single day, Mm -hmm. um, all day. It it gets me into a place of creativity. Um, And then you hit that third point, which is 
the community aspect, the, the, the camaraderie, you've got another person there, you're, you're having them invest in you, you're investing in them. Um, and that brings you to a place of creativity um, and collaboration, which always is beneficial for overcoming, um, overcoming or avoiding uh, burnout. Yeah. The last thing I'd say about self-care, like uh, creatively, and it's more of a like, hey, pay attention to this, is sometimes we go into like our self-care is seasonal, right? So like we have things that we do. One of my things for self-care is actually mowing. And I know some people are just like threw up in their mouth a little. And I get that. But and, and I'm not even talking about like ride mowing. I'm talking about push mowing. Like the mm -hmm. thing you hated doing as a teenager, but your parents made you. Like, I love that now. I love it because I can throw on a book into my ears. I can um, just be pushing a mower and I am accomplishing something. So there's a result side to it too. But really that part isn't even there. It's just a way for me to allow my subconscious to be. And the thing I, the warning I want to give is not don't have that. The warning I want to give is realize that some of those things that are helping renew you in one season are gone the next. Right now, we're in the midst of a fake winter storm, I think. But yeah. it's, I mean, it's snowing. They told us we'd have 11 inches, so naturally we have one. But regardless, um, the, 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 I'm not mowing today. That's not on my agenda. That's not a self-care right. thing I can do. There are a lot of those self-care things that we have in our lives that we do really good in one season and we forget about completely the next. Yep. And so when you go from season to season, those aren't things that you're actively thinking, hey, I'm losing some self-care here. We need to. Yeah. <laughs> we need to think about like what, what are self-care things I can do in spring? What are self-care yeah. things I can do in summer, fall? winter because when you do those things when you pay attention to it you're going to intentionally help yourself not reach a place of burnout so quickly so anyway that's one thing i wanted to say about self-care uh before we go to results but anyway so results results is a, a weird one because we don't always have clarity on what the result is we're trying to get you know and sometimes perhaps we do one of the worst things we can do to ourselves, and that's not give clarity to a goal or to a thing we're mm -hmm. actually trying to accomplish. And when we don't do that, you're never going to have a clear path. If you don't have a clear purpose, you don't have a clear path. So, and if you don't have a clear path, then you're just doing things. That's it. Like you're just existing. So you got to be careful there. So I would think first thing is you really need to have some clarity on what the result is. If you can't clearly say what the result is, you're not doing well to your subconscious um, and you're That's not true. taking care of yourself there on the results side. Um, another thing is if you are overwhelmingly having no results after you're putting in work in all areas of your life, I want to encourage you to do something that you may hate. And that's the idea of setting a smaller goal, setting a smaller target, uh, or I'm, I guess if it's a target, it's a bigger target, right? Right. Like, yep. Make it to a point where it's not terribly missable because when you are able to accomplish that, the dopamine release into your system is going to be great, right? Like it's going to be the right thing for you and you need to help balance some of those things. So I know it's not sexy to say, but set smaller goals. If you're in a place where you're not hitting anything and you don't feel like you're having results in your life. Um, and sometimes I will say sometimes it's just about, recognizing that you're not okay and being okay yeah. i'm just in a season where our, things aren't hitting maybe you're not connecting with one of your kids like you've wanted to maybe you're not connecting with your partner the way you want to be and not that i'd say like just don't be like oh it doesn't matter no put in effort you know try to do things but sometimes that one of the healthiest things my wife and i have actually done is just come up to each other and said, I feel like we're missing. I feel like we're not hitting right now. Like we're not connecting. We're not having good, meaningful conversations. Do you feel that way? And usually she's like, I do. Yeah, I feel it too. And sometimes I feel like we can 
that like that's a good win right there when all of a sudden we've been like we haven't been connecting yeah i agree mm -hmm. we haven't been connecting and we both go holy crap we just agreed like that's, <laughs> that's unbelievable right. we must Huge. be hitting like and that's a small win that's that's helpful in those moments so um yeah that, that's just one thought another is just um sometimes tasks uh we've used our energy you know we've we have, you know, there are some tasks that I need 10 units of energy. I just need that much energy to do it well. If I've got five units of energy, it's going to take me twice as long. If I have hmm. two units of energy, it's going to take me five times as long. Yeah. So when you think about that, I think sometimes we put tasks, we procrastinate the tasks we should be putting the energy into at a certain time. We push them to a, oh, I'll get to that later in the day. Later in the day, I've got a half unit of energy in my system. Yes. I cannot imagine how much effort it's going to take to get that task done. Sometimes I think on the results side, it might just be separate you when you do that task. Maybe it's a, well, I don't usually do that in the morning. Good, try, who cares? Give it a shot. Yeah, right. If it works, hooray. You're going to be like, wow, you mean energy actually matters and willpower actually matters to doing tasks? Yes, yes. a lot. And 100%. the most productive people are not the people who do the most movement. They're the people who, who do the least amount of movement with the most amount of return. And that's not just delegation. That's knowing how to use your time wisely. So change when you do something so that you have a better energy level. Yeah, I love that. Um, and that's that part of that's going to take some some uh, discovery on your part too to find out when yeah. your highest energy level is it's different for everybody. Yeah. Um, another thing too is be willing to step away from a task. If you're if you're beating your head against the wall, um, you're beating your head against the wall, right? You're not going to get anywhere on that project or yeah. on that task. Sometimes you need to step away from that and do something else maybe a smaller task, get the win in. It still needs to be done. Maybe it wasn't what you had planned right now, but it's something that you need to step away from. Let your brain rest from the first problem, work on the second one, get the result. And a lot of times you come back to the first original problem and go, oh my gosh, I realize what the problem is because your mind is working on it creatively in the background. Mm -hmm. um, and now you've had that time and a different perspective maybe um, to be able to create that solve at that point. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So the last area, you know, we talked about self-care. We talked about results. Uh, the last one's our support system. So this is one where in high school and middle school and college, it took a lot less intentionality to have friends and a support system. It took a lot less. Don't believe me? Why do we have Tinder? Why do we have Facebook? Why do we have, you know, and obviously that's not the only reason. However, it is harder to connect the older you get. It's harder to put yourself out there if you haven't done that ever. And a lot of times we've done it by default because we were in a group of people day in and day out. There was an opportunity for to us to take on risk and cope with, you know, the stressors we had. We had support system around us. We don't always have that anymore. We are at a place that we have to intentionally create those moments. We have to take advantage of those moments. And believe me, the older you get, I, I would, the thing I'm learning is that my energy level is not actually increasing. That my body is not intentionally getting stronger. In <laughs> fact, right. it's going down and I yes. have to work even harder to keep my body moving in a right fashion. Yep. Same thing with, with intentionality and, and our support system. We have to take advantage of those things. Um, even, even last night, a friend of mine, Joe, hit, hit a group of us up and was like, hey, wanna go smoke a cigar? And it was just like, yeah, I do. And I love when people take the risk to say, hey, does somebody wanna, hey, do, sh can we do this? And you end up having great conversation and, and building that area that often is depleted and we don't know it because we don't have that system in our life because, 
well, I've got a family and we've got so much going on. And uh huh, uh huh, I know we're all busy. But again, when we get busy, we get dumb. Okay. And this is an area that's worth investment. So schedule time with friends. Um, really, who, and, and I want to say, schedule time with friends who speak into your life. Mm-hmm. Like, if yeah. you come away from a conversation feeling depleted, exhausted, that's probably not your people. If you come away from a conversation rejuvenated, excited, like like I even texted my buddy last night after we hung out and I was like, man, thanks so much for hanging out. Like I always leave feeling more creative and excited. And, yeah. and his response was like, yeah, man, I'm just the hype guy. But like <laughs> those are the people you want in your life are not just, and it's not just what can I get from me, but it's a mutual understanding of like, you want those people in your life that you're building into. Um, maybe not the ones who are taxing you day in and day out. Okay. So, um, and, and another way for your support system could be in putting in intentional date nights with your partner or yeah. you know, I, your spouse. I don't, I don't know how that looks for you, but again, this is another area when people, and I'm doing air quotes for those of you who don't have video fall out of love. Um, no. that's just first off, not at all, uh, in my worldview, a thing. Uh, however, I think a lot of it has to falling out of intentionality and falling out of purposing, um, and wooing and going after somebody else and, um, having an intentional date night or setting that up in your life is so crucial. So like, it doesn't sound sexy to be like, we schedule our dates, doesn't sound sexy, but those nights that you actually have the date, let's go. Like, let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Those are the nights that I am like, and I, and on that date night, I'm not going, Hmm. I, you know, I, I calendar invited her for this and it was great. And I'm not thinking about any of that. I'm enjoying the time I have because I set up a moment to have an intentional time to grow part of my support system. Another thing that's really good with support system is to talk to a trusted friend. You kind of touched on this when you talked about, you know, having a friend that you talked with, like like talking with Joe last night about, you know, people that speak into your life and things like that. Mm -hmm. Having that trusted friend when you're in that position of burnout um, is going to be so helpful too, because you can't overcome this alone. You can't just fight your way out of it by yourself. You're going to have so much trouble doing that having that support system around you, you've got to have it. I mean, we talked about that's one of the big three of of having that personal agency. Getting that personal agency back is how we overcome burnout. You need that that trusted friend around you that you can go to and say, hey, I am absolutely and completely overwhelmed and I really need a friend right now. Mm -hmm. And that person needs to be somebody that that you trust and somebody who's not going to say, eh, that's nice, man. I've never experienced that. Right. Right. First of all, they're a liar. Second of all, they're not a good friend to hang out with. So make sure you have those people around you and take some time to to invest in them and then also to confide in them and let them know what's going on so they can help you get out of what you're in. Yeah. And you want that friend to be able to understand this level of this balance of grace and accountability like that is a that takes time to develop, which means you got to spend time in your support system, having those people and developing those relationships because the person who has the equal, not necessarily equal, but knows when the right time to show grace and the right time to show accountability and the right time to speak and the right time to listen, that doesn't happen overnight. Those people aren't just grown on trees because every person's different. Every relationship's different and every relationship deserves to, to be worked and it takes time and I'm glad it does. So uh, I, I like that a lot. Telling a trusted friend when you're going through it, just know that trusted friend. If you don't have that friend, risk, risk, risk. Yep. Go out, try to make those relationships. I know it's not easy. I know it's hard to go into a room of people you don't know. I know it seems weird in like middle school to go up to someone and say, will you be my friend? That sounds weird and cringy yes. and in your head it does. But I think on the flip side of someone who come up, comes up to you and says, Hey, I want to be your friend there. It's like, wow, cool. Yeah. If we click, yeah, let's go. Like that's yeah. the way it is because you need that support system. 
we need those results. We need that self-care because burnout is not somewhere you have to stay. Okay, you don't have to stay in burnout. Uh, It doesn't mean it's easy to get out of it. It's not easy to get out of it. It's really challenging. Um, It feels like burnout. It just feels like your veins are full of sludge and you can barely do the things that you're usually able to do second nature. You just can't do them. But we can understand now these variables and the balance of these variables between results, between self-care and between support. And when you're going through that hard time, maybe it's right now, maybe that's you, and you're going through that hard time. What, what area is it? And don't, don't be lazy and go, oh, it's all of it. No, shut up. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm, this is not the grace side. Shut up. Think about it, okay? Because yeah. you're, you're worthy and you deserve to think about this for you, to think about what area is it really for me? And what areas do I need to focus on? Because there have been times that I have been in what felt like utter chaos burnout where I didn't know how I was going to take the next step. And I fixed one little thing. And all of a sudden, like it was like the clouds parted and I had the clouds were so dark. I thought it was night, but it was day, you know, and those moments, like all it takes is the knowledge of and the ability to think through and the ability to implement. Okay. Yeah. I know it's hard, but you deserve to have the ability to cope with some of these things. Okay. Uh, and to overcome this. So um, I think that's it. I think uh, my biggest encouragement is just know you can fight this and you should fight this and find your team to help you fight this. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today on the Ridgeline Leadership Podcast. Catch you next time.